Well, hello and welcome on this sunny morning to the South Pembrokeshire coast. Well, today I'm going to take you somewhere quite unusual and mysterious too, because down there, hidden in the rocks and cliffs of Pembrokeshire, is a place known as St. Govan's Chapel. It's believed to date from the 14th century, possibly the 13th century, but they think there was some sort of religious building there dating back to the 6th century. So let's go and take a look. And as I do so, let me tell you a bit more about this area and St. Govan's Chapel. Well, before I go down to St. Govan's Chapel itself, I was going to take a walk along the coastal path and show you some of the features along this beautiful stretch of coast. But unfortunately, this area is by Castle Martin Byron Range, and they've got live ammunition training going on at the moment and this tanks over there and things like that i don't know if you can see the red flag flying that means don't come in you'll get shot <laughs> and there are people there guarding the path so i have to give that a miss when you do come down to this area you have to check because they often close these roads these access roads it went over there is closed but this one was open and if you look castle martin fire and range it tells you what areas are open and what which ones are closed so who was saint govan it's not really that clear there's a couple of stories one's a bit more plausible than the other and that refers to an irish monk from the sixth century St. Govan, who was being pursued by pirates, but he managed to escape from them by hiding in a gap in the cliffs here in Pembrokeshire, and that's where St. Govan's Chapel is today. So, you know, I don't know how it's, you know, it's a long time ago, so you have to take all these stories with a pinch of salt, but it does sound believable. The other one is a bit romantic and a bit of nonsense, really, and that's to do with the name Govan being a play on the name Gwain, as in Knights of the Round Table, Sir Gwain. Anything to do with King Arthur, you have to take with a, a lot of salt, and you're not a pinch, <laughs> a couple of spadefuls. So I would think uh, actually a monk, hermit type person who was uh, had a little chapel down there is far more believable than the Knights of the Round Table. Anyway, that's enough for yabbering. Let's go and take a look at the place. As you would expect from the location, the church itself is quite small, 20 foot by 12 foot. But one legend goes that St. Govan himself is actually buried here underneath the altar. It's a strange place, quite spooky. And just through here on the eastern side, you can see the cliff face itself. And also on the western side, part of the wall 
is actually the cliff. I think these windows are original, but this one I think is new. Well, not new, <laughs> not original to the 13th century. And obviously the, the tiles on the roof have been replaced and maintained. And here, is this what they called the piscina? We used to wash the holy chalices and things like that. I'm not religious, so I don't know all this terminology. <laughs> anyway, it's a fascinating place. Well, about 25 metres down the steps from the chapel, you'll find St Govan's Well. This was originally fed by a spring, which has long since dried up. Well, I'm here on a sunny June's day and it's quite calm and pleasant. Can you imagine this place in the winter when the storms are smashing against the cliff face and the wind's howling? It's pretty bleak. A perfect place for a hermit. So that was the mysterious St. Govan's Chapel. But before I go, I did mention earlier how I couldn't walk west because they've got military exercises on Castle Martin Byron Range. But you can walk east and a few hundred yards that way, I think they're remnants of World War II uh, firing range equipment, things like that. I'm sure there's a, a bombing target and some other stuff. I had a quick look on a map and I saw that. So let's walk over and see if we can find it and hopefully we'll be allowed access to it. Let's go and take a look before we go. So I've walked about 200 yards east from St. Gavin's Chapel and I've come across what's called a blockhouse. I think it's where they uh, operated machinery and things like that for target practice in the firing range. It's well covered and that's uh, I think that dates from World War II. But another reason I stopped here, I don't know if you can hear it, nothing's happening at the moment, but as I was walking, I heard some loud booms from the firing range. If they're tanks or heavy artillery, nothing's going on at the moment. But I have to wait for a big explosion near me now. <laughs> run away, run away. I'll keep this running for a bit, see if I can pick up any of the shells. So those were the block houses. I don't know if you heard the, the booms coming from the firing range. At one stage they were quite loud. So I walked about 400 yards east from St. Gavin's Chapel and I've come across these stone concentric circles. No, they're not an Iron Age fort or enclosure. What it is, is actually a World War II bombing target. If I go onto Google Maps and the aerial view, have a look at this. There is a lot of action coming from that firing range. It's quietened down now, but I can hear the, the roar of tanks and some booms. Can you hear that? I'm sure I heard machine gun fire. That sounds pretty close to me.
the beautiful South Pembrokeshire coastline and the sound of tanks and gunfire. What a perfect way to spend a June morning. Luckily, I wasn't hit by a stray tank shell and hopefully when I get back to my car, it's still gonna be intact. <laughs> Earlier on, there was a big black cloud coming from over there as if they uh, bombed Milford Haven. It was really kicking off. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video about St. Gavin's Chapel and seeing this beautiful stretch of Welsh coastline. And I've got some more videos about the Welsh coastline coming up next. And we'll see you in one of those. Bye.